Okay, welcome back to Fast Informs. My name is Tim Davies. What are we in today? Mosquito. We're in Mosquito Land, and we're going to have a look at hypoxia. So we're going to get the jet started real quick. Everything's a jet to me, guys. You know that. We're in um, the Marianas. We'll get airborne, and then we'll just climb up, and we'll have a look at what happens when pilots become hypoxic. Okay, I've been hypoxic many times in fast jets. Um, equipment failure, that sort of thing, or things I've forgotten to do. And uh, we get taught to recognize hypoxia. Now look, we're in a mosquito. How cray cray is this? So we've got to uh, flash up the motor. So we're going to put the gang bar up here. There's hopping into the this seat over here where my nav lives. We'll hop over there and we'll turn around and we'll just put some out fuels on. That goes to the outer tanks and we'll put the tank pressurization up there. So this is not the hardest jet to start. I'll probably forget a few things. You obviously do your left to right around the cockpit, making sure everything is in the right place. These throttles full and free, but then I'm just going to move them forward to about that, about half an inch it says. The RPM boats go forwards there. Gear is down, we've got the switches in place. I'm not doing all the checks, guys. I mean, it's written, you can do them all. It's, it doesn't matter, you know, we can check things like check voltages and all that kind of stuff. And we can check fuel tanks here and everything else. And if you want to do that, 24 volts, we can do all that stuff. But there's other guys out there on the tinter webs that have done that. Interestingly, we want to talk about oxygen a little bit, don't we? Now, our oxygen is behind the stick there. You can see these gauges down here. So at the moment, if I put that on, you can see we're not getting the oxygen here. We're not getting any pressurization or anything like that, even though we have full oxygen. And that's because you've got to put your oxygen valve on. And that's over here in the manual. It says it's behind the pilot's seat at the uh, co-pilot's or the navigator's feet. So I would have thought it'd be around here. Looked at it for ages and I couldn't find it. So eventually I found it here. Now, if I put that switch on now, I can either rotate it. I've got it mapped. Have a look what happens to the pressure here. Okay, so that's the switch there. I'll move that now. Watch this. And now we're now we can rotate this switch here, and now you can see we've got pressurization. Okay, pressurization. If I was to turn the pressurization off again, this one here, you can see we've been that. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave off today, but we might put it back on again uh, up the flight to see how quickly we can cure the our hypoxia because we're going to get ourselves hypoxic today. Yes, we are. That needs to come open there. Um, as I said, we're going to flash up the motor. Those in the right place. We do the left and then the right. Everything looks pretty good. If you forget anything, those are those are closed up here. Um, trim wise, I need a bit of right rudder for. There we go. A bit of right rudder for takeoff. I'll sort the trim out. It's a bit nose down. It wants to be, and we'll do that a little bit later once we get the. Oh, we can do it now. There we go. A little bit nose down. I think it's one to one and a half. I don't know what I mean. Put it about there. Hopefully, it'll help us get airborne, and uh, we'll get the engines started. So I've got to speak to my ground crew now. Magnetos need to come on. I'll just speak to them quickly. Ground crew. Start burning. Now, ground crew, what are you doing, mate? Copy. Copy. Get it done. Get it done, fam. I'll whack all my magnetos up now because I'm going to start both engines and I'll open these by some right clicks. Left on that. Prop spins towards the jet. And now I'll press the second one with the right mouse button. That should catch. And 1200 RPM we want to set that to here. So it's pretty much open at 1200 already. So I'll leave it there. Good stuff. That's uh, start one. We're going to start two. Clip up. And start to Cluck open, open, start. Okay, and the second one, boost. It's going to catch, hopefully. That's nice. Hopefully 1200 RPM as well. Build that slowly. We're going to warm this up now. I want to shut these down, guys, here. Shut that and shut that. Shut that. Sorry, there we go. Now, we're going to warm up. Then we're going to open up our little radiator things here. I'm also going to put some other things on. I'm going to put a pizza heat on there. And I'm also going to put some systems on here. No flap today. Um, and I want to warm this up, don't I? So, yeah, about 15 on that. Temp down, the rad temp down here. Boost. We'll sort that out in a minute. We're going to airborne with the full props on that. Reset the altimeter to zero. And just do a walk around the cockpit, left to right. Make sure everything's cool in the gang. Some things might need to be caged or uncaged. And I don't really know. I haven't done much on this airplane already. Either way, I'm just going to sort of start taxiing. We need to take the brake off. So, weapons panels down here. Everything's cool. Air on trim is neutral. We've got one down there. And we've got some over there. We're just going to try and get airborne. Accelerate and climb at uh, 150 knots. All right. So let's get the brake off then. So, pull that towards you. Click the little brakey thing and it should come off. Yeah, there you go. Should be rolling forwards. There we are. And now differential braking, guys. Differential braking. So I'm going to put rudder in on these new rudder pedals I've got. The TF, the MFG ones. And I've got the... It's pretty cool, actually. I'll have to show you this in a minute. I've got the sort of World War II pedals here. We're going to taxi all the way along here for the Marianas, okay? I'm going to speed this up because it's going to be dull as dull thing for you guys. 
Okay, looking down our runway then, so there are some things we need to do. I'm not exactly straight, but I'm okay. Pressures, uh, temperatures are good. Yep, yeah, happy with the temperatures and all and the rad temp. Uh, I'm not doing a high power check because I really can't bother. I'll set some power there. Right, looking at that then. So the trims are checked, all of those. Air intakes are as required, which is nice. I've got rads open, rad flaps are open there. Uh, prop levers are full, fine. Uh, ooh, don't know how to fly these things. Fuel level, fuel selectors checked. Yeah, over here. So let's have a think about fuel then. So we start on the outers and then we should warm up on the mains and then we s we go on the fullest tank and I probably today was like 90 versus 50 50 on that outer tank let's change across we'll go to the inner tanks here and there we go so we're going to that one to that to that that should be on the main tanks there okay back to the other seat I've mapped that flap lever there you can see I'm not using flap yet but I've mapped it I've also done the gear one which I'm I've done that with so I think once we get airborne I'm going to move that to that position I believe and then move the gear up or it might be the other position I can't remember now but we're gonna have a look at it everything's good we're seeing at airborne climbing at uh, 150 knots um, and we are going to use 2850 rpm nine boost we're going to set the boost down here and always look at where you want to set that boost it's full power takeoff nine's about there we're going to climb out and then as we go through about uh, 18,000 feet we'll put the supercharger on there to auto little switch down there and really I don't know much else about it so we'll see if we can get airborne okay let's let's do this power's coming up whoa chill power Coming up and rolling. Straight to rudder. A little differential braking. That's good there. Nose should come down as we pass around about 90 to 100 knots. Nose coming down, hopefully. Start flying. Pop in the runway. Come on, climb. There she goes. Right, so we are flying. Nice and trimmed out. Now I'm going to put the gear up, so my safety catch, gear travels safely, yes, look at those lights, gear lights, let the jet accelerate, I'm trimming forward quite a lot here, more than I expected to, put the safety catch back on, the gear, stay there where it is. Okay, shut the windows, make it a bit quieter. And just try and hold an accurate 150, which is not easy. Now, I want you to have a look at the uh, altimetry here as we come through. What are we coming through there? About 5,000 feet. So I'm not expecting any, not expecting any effects, anything at all really to happen until probably above 12,000. So we keep the climb going. So there's the same amount of oxygen in the air at all heights. Um, so about 21% is oxygen, okay? Because as the pressure falls outside, now those oxygen molecules are more spread out, so your body's actually getting less oxygen into it. We need oxygen, okay? We need oxygen. So, what you'd be thinking, Arnie, oh, that's on there, fine, happy. Uh, supercharger goes on when the boost falls to about seven, apparently. Max attainable boost seven, so I can get more boost than that. No, that's max from there. Okay, so when that falls to seven, I'll put the supercharger on. The problem with the oxygen, as I said, is that obviously I need to breathe oxygen and anything above about 10,000 feet can be a problem okay it goes down it goes down gradually it's one of those things of course we need oxygen and hypoxia is the uh, inability or the reduction of oxygen within our cells and our blood and everything else as we come through uh, about 12,000 feet now we're approaching I would start to think about feeling the effects so what I'm looking out for now no oxygen isn't on obviously you know, I've had this for real note the color in the cockpit note the color on the wings reds and yellows and all this kind of stuff when you start depriving the body of oxygen, uh, especially the brain, it's the same as a G-lock condition. It's like when you pull G, everything grays out. And that's a really good term, graying out. And we'll, we'll experience graying out in this. And all those things that are colorful are gonna start becoming gray, okay? And it's gonna start from the periphery, from the outside of our, our eyes, because of course the cornea being robbed of um, blood and ox robbed of oxygen as well is gonna lose that ability to see. This is how you recognize hypoxia. Well, first off, you do your checks properly, fuel, oxygen, engine and location your fuel check so the fuel have a look at that yeah we've got good fuel balancing the tanks oxygen i'll be looking down here and going oh I haven't turned my oxygen on okay but it's on there but i haven't turned the main valve on so i need to turn it on to get some oxygen i then i turn that valve on there over there and i'd get this there we go got oxygen but i'm going to turn off because we want to see the effects then we have a look at the engines make sure that we've got good boost that we can hold a boost pressure we can at seven and I'm, I'm gonna hold that maximum pressure of seven, and if I can't hold anything more than that, I will put the supercharger on. 
Now, we're talking hypoxia. So actually, to be honest, we're getting quite high, 18,000. So I'd, I'd be watching out for some, some things now about that. Um, so again, just flying along, minding my own business. The problem with hypoxia is it actually feels quite pleasant. It actually feels quite pleasant. You don't know that you're losing the ability to actually breathe air. You actually feel quite euphoric sometimes. And in fact, one of my mates who had one of the worst hypoxia accidents said he was flying along and he remember thinking, this is amazing. He was at 32,000, 33,000 feet. He was thinking, um, this is a great flight. I'm having a great time. And he kind of caught himself halfway through and he went, but I'm not having a great time. I've got to do reports when I get back. Kind of argue with the boss a little bit. He goes, why am I feeling so good? He's, and straight away, he said hypoxia. Looked down and he had a disconnected hose, I believe it was. And so he wasn't, he reconnected his hose. And of course, once you reconnect your face, you know, everything fills up with air, with oxygen again. And you get this massive glow and you get very, very hot. Now, they put you on a rig and they deprive you of oxygen on an oxygen mask now in the Air Force. And I did that before I left. And everyone has different symptoms. So my symptoms were, um, well, different to everyone else's. Everyone's got different symptoms. I, I got quite a hot chest. Um, I didn't realize it, but I, sh I shaked a lot. And the guys were saying that my hands were shaking a lot. Uh, I wasn't smoking. I stopped smoking a decade ago or whatever. But um, and that was interesting to me because I, when I looked at my hands, I couldn't see the shaking. Approaching 20,000 feet then in an unpressurized airplane pretty short and uh, with no oxygen turned on so we'll just see whether that actually happens so I think I am getting a bit of blurring here guys so for real now I'll be checking, checking my oxygen I'm probably quite euphoric I'm probably quite in a happy place I think the colours are getting blurred out I can't really tell so we're going to sit with it and see what happens okay and I can see a bit more well I feel a bit more blurred you can maybe I'd notice that blurring now and I think the next thing that's going to happen is we're going to get um, these colours fading out Everything's going to be coming a bit more blurry now. You can see it is at the extremities, in the peripheral vision. It'll make instruments harder to read pretty soon. I don't need to still climb, I just can be sitting here. If I just sit here at this height, which I'll try and do, I'll try and just fly level, then, uh, yeah, we can have a problem. So the aircraft is nice and colourful there, but back inside you can see it's a very dark atmosphere now. It is blurred. And so, for real, I'll be checking all my instruments. I'll be, I'll be in a dive now. That's one way of getting rid of this, is dive. Idle, just get yourself down. But we're going to take it further. And then we're going to put the, instrument, we're going to put the oxygen on. So I can't even read the dials now. I'll be like, you know, I might, you know, this is, it gets to the stage where you go too far. You just go too far and you probably fall asleep. So it's critical. This is a horrible place to be. It's very reminiscent of instances I had in the past. Horizons become merged with the, the sky above and the, the ground below. Everything becomes merged. You might become agitated. Some of my friends became quite agitated. Um, fingertips may go blue, where the oxygen is just not getting out to the hands. Lips go blue, but of course you can't see that. You can't see it in your buddy or any, anyway, he, because he's got a mask on his face and he's in a different cockpit. Well, look, there's no color definition really in this cockpit anymore. Okay, and it, you don't really notice there's no color definition. I've still got this central point in my eyes here, look, that point there, where I get color. But if I'm not looking directly at it, I don't get color. So right now I'd be in a really, really, really bad place. It'd be horrible, okay? And I'm probably close to just falling asleep here. I don't know what happens in DCS if you fall asleep. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn the oxygen on and we're gonna see how quickly we recover. So looking at my gaze, I can't really see down here. There's the gaze there. Let's put the oxygen on. It's really bad, isn't it? You recover very quickly. There we go, straight away. And I'll be burning hot now. I'll be like, oh God, that's just horrible. So of course we can turn it off again. I'm gonna see whether we die. Okay, so that's been about three minutes now. Look, we've got it coming back in again, haven't we? If you see how far we can take it this time, see whether we actually go unconscious. Right, that's super blurry again, guys. Can't really see anything. Very little colour. So I assume at some point it's just going to go black, dark, is it? So I'll just die. It's pretty miserable, isn't it? Very limited ability to see colour now. It's obviously, the, not getting any oxygen into the blood at all. Of course, none of that's getting to the eyes. It'll get quiet as well. I mean, it'll get quiet and quiet and quiet, and I expect everything will just go dark. And I'll be dead. In my mosquito. Pretty sad, isn't it? So I'm ignoring all the signs. Probably feel quite happy. Very tired. I'd be feeling very tired now, probably. Like, oh, you know. Get sleepy. I'd open a window or something. Probably won't help, though. Well, the window won't help at all. I'll open it. Doesn't matter. Thin air out there, thin air inside. Makes it a bit noisier. 
going to die. Might as well make it quiet. Yeah, that ringing in the ears is something as well. They've modelled that really well. <laughs> this feels horrible. I don't want to do this, guys. I don't want to be doing this because I've had this before for real. And it just kind of brings it all back. Look how that goes so quiet. Heartbeat, is that? Yep. Heartbeat slowing. Heartbeat, well, heartbeat should increase, I believe. Yes, it does. It tries to pump more blood to the, the extremity and everything it needs it. The heartbeat will increase. Now, you should be in a dive now. You shouldn't ever get to this stage. People say it's feeling like dr being drunk. Yeah, I guess it is like that. And probably because of the same well, toxins and alcohol. I don't know what I'm going to say. Oh, I've gone black. There we go, we have gone black. So if I put option on now, I don't know if it's going to kill me out of the game. Will I just sit like this now? Maybe I'll sit like this. Whether it will let me put option on, I don't know. Yep, fine. There we go. So someone's put the option on for me, and I've come back around immediately. I'll be a bit confused. The jet's in a UP, it's an unusual position. So the throttles are back. So nose down, roll, instrumentation only, roll, wings level, pull, check the speed. What we're going to do now is we're going to take it back to that level again, but this time we're going to cure it by descending. So my oxygen is off. Okay, guys, we're so back to our favourite place again. Pretty horrible, isn't it? I, don't, I can't know what height it was at. 26 again, but no oxygen. So we're going to let it get to a bad stage. <laughs> like, could it get worse than this? Um, and then we'll just no, say so we can't. We haven't got much colour at all. Now what we're going to do is an emergency descent, okay? So we get the nose down. Obviously, the aircraft would have a limiting speed. And I will be coming back to idle on the throttles now. And we're just going to get ourselves down because I can't really tell going down but I really want to just get this jet down and if it's like well how do you know if you're going to fly into the sea or fly into the mountain I, I don't really care because I'm going to die pretty soon so I just want to get that down try and control the aircraft whatever speed you can you need to get yourself lower so I've gone through a cloud layer I'm looking at the next cloud layer so you know I'm in a bad way anyway that's it I can't even see an altimeter or anything so that's how bad it can be so really it's a rapid descent guys if you say why would you leave the throttles open well you probably over speed them sound coming back now sound coming back bit of color coming back now start checking your instrumentation what is it saying um about 12,000 looks like yeah good stuff okay get below 10 check all your option systems excellent guys okay let's find a uh, orientation location there we go there's an airport over there Not that I've uh, done it before. Yeah, you're floating this puppy, probably because of the flat, to be fair. Okay, good stuff. Hold it there, hold it there. Stick back, stick back. Hold that nose, hold that turtle down. Bit of power, probably, just to get some airflow. Okay, control surface. Bit of braking. Center of the runway is always good. Or well, trying to steer it from outside. Oh, great stuff, guys. Hey, really appreciate you watching the video. If you want to come flying? Uh, look up Shadowlands, uh, patreon.com Shadowlands, or patreon.com Tim Davies, sorry, come to Shadowlands, come fly airplanes. Thanks so much, Tim Davies, Fast Hit Performance.